Hey, so amazing. Uh, you see how they playing? Uh, live wire. It's all about sports and entertainment. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So official, like you never seen. Keep it going till the whistle blowing from the referee. Uh, everything from highlights and stats. You know that we got to run it back. Whether on the field or the court. You know that this is where it's at. Uh, subscribe, no delaying. Uh, this is live wire. Uh, sports and entertainment. Let's go. All right, what's good, everyone? Welcome to another Line Wire Sports Media update. All right, we're going to talk some WNBA because what I got to drop for y'all is going to, and I, I, I honestly, I'm not going to sugarcoat it because I'm not going to sit here and pretend that um, the, the, the statements came out a couple of days with cancer, Kathy Ingerberg, um is not important. But it's a whole, the spectrum of the situation is bigger than what we really looking at or what we really hearing. So you got to pay close attention to when people talk and how they talking. So let me get right into it. Now, I, I watched a lot of content creators drop information on this and kind of like, they kind of like, well, she dropped the ball on this. She don't care about the players and stuff like that. I don't think she... I don't think she not care about the players. I think she's trying to enlighten people about how it is. If you think about this, look at what Draymond Green has done in the W in the NBA last year. Choke out Rudy Gobert, did all of this crazy stuff until the NBA finally did something to him about it. Now, mind you, Caitlin Clark came into the league. Nobody targeted Angel Reese. Yeah, uh, 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 what's the uh, Alyssa Thomas choked it, you know, slammed her down. But that was one incident. Caitlin Clark has been getting Stewie when they played New York. She set the hardest screen on her, knocked her down. Could have gave her whip flags. She could have got injured right then and there. See, people. Th- you could tell if you really pay attention to Brianna Stewart, she's really nasty. She's a nasty person because you could tell how she talked. You could tell how she tried to sm- smile in the media with her small ass teeth and everything, her big ass overbite. But even when Diane Taurasi sent the firing squad, Everybody was taking shots at Caitlin Clark. Still to this day, she 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 is not as much, but she has. So when Kathy Ingerberg was able to sit down and they was asked a question about the Angel Reese situation and the fans on both sides and racism, you know, Kathy Ingerberg gave her in light information about it. Now, to that fact. Nobody was happy because of what she said, but I'm going to break it down a little bit more for you so you can understand it. But first, I'm allowing you to listen to what she had to say. Let's go to that question, which raises some sensitivities of rivalries between players. In the case of uh, Angel Reese, who's just had to shut it down because of a wrist injury, Caitlin Clark, who's continuing to play. Rivalry that goes back to their college days, presumably, uh, where I guess some trash talking entered in. But now it seems on some social media channels to have taken a darker turn, a more menacing turn, where race has been introduced into the conversation, where sexuality is sometimes introduced into the conversation. How do you try and stay ahead of that, Uh, try and tamp it down or or act as a league when two of your most visible players are involved, not personally, it would seem, but their fan bases are involved in saying some very uncharitable things well, about the other. Well, the one other. thing that's great about the league right now, we do sit at this intersection of, of culture and sport and fashion and music. Like, the WNBA players are really looked at now as kind of cultural icons. True. And when you have that, you have a lot of attention on you. There's no more apathy. Everybody cares. It is a little that bird magic moment, if you recall, from 1979 when those two rookies came in from a big college rivalry, one white, one black, 
And so we have that moment with these two. But the one thing I know about sports, you need rivalry. That's what makes people watch. They want to watch games of consequence between rivals. They don't want everybody being nice to one another. So the social media is different today than it was in 1979 when it didn't exist. Um, but, you know, I always tell the players, you know, I was told a long time ago, if someone's typing something in and you wouldn't ask their advice, ignore it. So it's, um, it's a balance, Quick. but certainly from a marketing dollars, but corporate partners are stepping up to endorse these players uh, much, much more so than they were five years ago because they see the benefit of having women and diverse women representing their brand. I agree. Rivalries are good. Manning and Brady, the prime <laughs> one among them. If the economy turns sour, how does it affect your business? Yeah, in sports, a, a lot of the corporate partnership dollars are discretionary dollars. That's why it's important to lock in and do scenario planning around locking into longer-term deals, whether it's a media deal like we just locked in for 11 years. Having that revenue stream fixed for at least that period of time is good in every economic outcome. But it's scenario planning. Certainly corporations who have discretionary dollars who put it towards sports, and we know they go to men's sports before they go to women's sports. Mm -hmm. So we do do scenario planning around that time. All right, so you listen and heard what she had to say. Now, me personally, rather she said the right thing or the wrong thing, it probably would never have been enough. But just to say she's in hot water because the NFL, the what the WN, the WNBA P, um, Players Association wants her head for it because she didn't protect a certain group of people. That's what it's about. See, there's a certain group of people that's in the league, and if you ain't rocking with them, then you ain't on their side. And see, when Angel Reese put out her, <clears throat> her first episode, the first thing she did <clears throat> is went after Caitlin Clark's fans. She didn't say anything about her fans be being out there like that, attacking Caitlin Clark. Because there's YouTube um, content creators out here that tax Caitlin Park, say, you know, saying calling her fans racist. But guess what? Most, some of her fans are black. So what does that make us? Racist too? You can't control fans and their outbursts or what they do on social media. What Kathy Ingenberg was supposed to do? Get up on a podium, make a press conference. And say, well, hey, fans, y'all need to tone it down. You know, we need to protect our, protect the league, protect the women in the league. Okay, yeah, the NFL does that against fans. If the fans get out of, get out of hand or throwing stuff at players and stuff, yeah, they get kicked out. This is why you have bodyguards. This is why you have security around. If something jump off, you know, what I'm saying, if. You, like Angel Reese was talking about on her podcast that, hey, she was um, being sexualized. They got her address and all of this stuff. But, okay, if they had got your address and stuff like that, would you be able to say something that, a, a long time ago, not just wait on your podcast? Now, I'm going to bring something down to you. This is the same. When you, when you seek attention, you kind of fixate shit in your head to make you think that, a lot of shit going on. Not saying that people don't be targeted. I remember a fan text, um, not Steffi Graf, but Monica, um, the tennis player, Monica, um, dang, I can't remember her because she was my favorite tennis player. Monica, um, I'll think about it later on. But you know who I'm talking about. But the thing about it is when you post certain stuff on the internet, it draws attention. Angel Reese is a atten attention seeker. She she seeks attention. So she posts all these new pictures, bathing suits, and showing her body off in um for for her TikTokers or Instagrams and people comment on there. So what you gonna think that's going through some of these people's mind that are your fans? They're not Caitlin Clark fans, because how can you how can you distinguish? somebody tracking you down or whatever is Caitlin Clark fans when they could be your own fans obsessed with you. See, remember when she had beat Caitlin Clark in the national championship, she was all in her face showing a ring finger. But then a the year after when Caitlin Clark blew them out, um, the, what the tournament, she got on podium, started crying, 
talk about she was sexualized and she was all of this, the victimhood thing. You want to you want to be the villain, but you want to be victimhood. Now, like Kathy Ingerberg said that, hey, rivalry is good. Yes, it is. People love rivalries. That's why a lot of people love college football because of the rivalries. They love to see drama. They love to see this. We just had an incident with the Las Vegas Raiders <clears throat> and uh, Chargers playing and fans was fighting. Men, women, they all was fighting at the game. Stuff like that is going to happen. If you feel like you're being target, then that means you need to have security, protection around you so nobody can harm you. It's not up to the commissioner to get out and make a grandstand and say, hey, oh, you know, the fans, we need to calm down how we celebrate. Our no, you can't control <clears throat> you can't control people's emotions. You can't show that. That's like telling a school shooter not to go shoot up school. You know, let's protect the kids. No, you can't control stuff like that. Stuff like that in society happens. And for Brianna Stewart to come out with her comment about the commissioner and saying that she dropped the ball, saying that we wish Kathy Hood used her platform in a different way and have made that a little bit better. Just telling the fans enough is enough. Okay, how can you tell the fans enough is enough? What are you going to do? Not have no fans? You got to think about it. Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark are the two most pivotal, had the most followers that came into the WNBA this year. So their fans is going to be who it is. But you can't sit there and say, okay, well, single out Caitlin Clark. Y'all didn't do anything to protect Caitlin Clark when she came in the league and she was getting knocked all around. When when Angel Wilson, Angel Wilson and um, Becky Hammond was out there spewing racism out towards her, nobody said anything then. Well, like, oh, we love Caitlin Clark. When mainstream media was out here thinking Kate McClough wasn't going to be good, dragging her name. But now they see how good she is. They want to do a 180. But y'all want to protect y'all gender for y'all self. But see, the thing about it is, we already know what it is. They don't want to see a white person the face of the league. They'd rather have a black person. Don't care who it is, as long as it's a black person. You know what I'm saying? But for Breonna, but see, the thing about it is, Breonna Stewart been talking down on the WNBA for for the last few years. Cause you know, you know her and the Fisher Carler, and I think the Fisher Carler husband, they all chipped in for this unrival league. So now she's recruiting all these players to play in the unrival league in January. Angel Reese is one, Ricky Jackson is one, Cam Brink is one. You know one person who ain't? Caitlin Clark. Now, Lynn Dunn did say that Caitlin Clark has been invited, but I don't think Caitlin Clark is going to join them. I think Caitlin Clark is going to play overseas for the summer. I think she's going to play overseas. So she said, "Become a um, become a fan of our sport, and and for the new ones, lock in on everyone. Don't don't be disrespectful because." Because as a lead, we stick together. Now that's a bunch of bullshit. Because if you stick, if y'all stick together, then y'all will stick up for Caitlin Clark. Y'all will come out and say, "Hey, you know what? What's being done to Caitlin Clark?" Or the first thing they always come out and say, "Well, this is a physical lead. The NBA is physical. Not less. It's not. Well, it used to be physical, but it's not as physical no more. So why would you want it to be a physical lead? But then y'all say y'all stick together because if that's the case. Y'all will be sticking up for Caitlin Clark. But y'all don't, y'all don't, the only rookie y'all target is her. And, and she said, it, it, there's no place for it. Now, I'm going to read off just a little bit. I'm not going to do a lot of, a lot of this reading off what the NFL PA, I mean, the, not the NFL, but the WNBA PA had to say. So they say in a statement from the WNBA PA executive director, 
here is the answer the commissioner should have provided to a very clear question regarding racism, monogamistic, and harassment uh, um, experienced by players. There is absolutely no place in sport and life for vile hate, racism, language, homophobic comments, or monogamistic attacks our players are facing in social media. This is not about rivalries or iconic personalities fueling the business model. Keep this kind of toxic, toxic fandom should never be tolerated or left unchecked. It demands immediate action and frankly should have been addressed long ago. Now let me explain something to you. Now they feel like Kathy Ingerberg didn't do her job. So now they want to form a coup to get her, get her out of there. But you got to understand something. Adam Silver is over y'all. He ain't going to allow Kathy Ingerberg to get out, out. Now, he might advise her to handle certain situations a little bit better, but he ain't going to have her ousted just like that. And it's not about to happen. So, and see, like, I was listening to this content creator, and he brought up a very thing. They want, they would rather burn down the WNBA before they allow a, a white commissioner and a white person to be over the league. They'd rather have somebody black so they could control everything where they could say, okay, well, we, you know, we'll do this, we'll do that. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you got to look at it for what it is. They have a certain agenda they're trying to protect. A certain group of people they want to protect. I don't even have to call the letters out or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. You see it. Like I said, Breonna Stewart formed this on rivalry. She's trying to rival the WNBA. But she got to understand the, the, the biggest money maker is Caitlin Clark. And if Caitlin Clark doesn't come there and she sticks with the WNBA, guess what's going to happen to your own rival league? Nobody's going to watch you. You ain't really got no backing. You know what I'm saying? The NBA has been backing y'all for years. Now that y'all got, y'all went from $60 million to 200 or $250 billion TV deal that's about to pop off. You really think the NBA is going to allow y'all to come after the commissioner of the WNBA, when they y'all just got a, um, a, a a new TV deal, thanks to Kate Clark, it's not going to happen. Because guess what? Wherever your all rival league is playing on, nobody's going to be watching that. Because guess what? That's the, in January. That's playoff championship. That's bowl games. That's NFL playoffs. Everything, nobody's going to be watching. Hockey probably be playing. Nobody's going to be watching. So I know I'm not going to be watching you. So they are hoping that Caitlin Clark play. Now, Ellen Duncan did came out and said something very important. And I said this. Now, I do have that old clip when one of the, the, the dude from ESPN was at the Fever early in the season and how people was using her name because DJ Karen just came out and said, well, how you not know that people are using your name? She Because Kayla came out with two statements and she's like, I don't pay attention to it. You, you know what I'm saying? Then she had a company and then she came back out and said, well, hey, if somebody using her name, that's not fair. Everybody should be treated the same. Boom. Then first thing they say, oh, well, she should have said that the first time. Rather she did or not. But Ellen Duncan said that, and I and I and, and even LeBron James that came out and said that K Caitlin Clark should not be. She should not be, um, <clears throat> in none of that political stuff. Just play ball. If they ask you a question, answer it to the best of your ability. But leave all of that stuff alone. They want her to be some kind of activist for black people. To denounce her, her um white privilege. I don't know what the F that is about. But at the end of the day, she has a job. She's 22 years old. 
she's out here playing ball. For my thing is this here, Brianna Stewart, you've been in the league for a long time. Don Tarasi, you've been in the league for a long time. Aneka a Numa K, y'all been in the league for a long time, but y'all ain't standing up talking. Y'all kept silent because you wanted the league to stay under that radar while y'all just do y'all thing and think that somebody is supposed to support y'all when y'all don't even support yourselves. But then when things ain't rocking for y'all the way it is supposed to be, then y'all want to cry out racism. Y'all want to say my nonsense. Y'all want to cry out sexist, se uh, sexism and all of this crazy nonsense. But let me play this little clip real quick. Oh, the people who listen, the people who have watched me color cover college women's basketball mm -hmm. for the last three and a half years. I'm a huge Caitlin Clark fan. Definitely. I am a huge Caitlin Clark fan, as most of us are. Anyone who <clears throat> likes basketball likes Caitlin Clark. Does she have haters? I'm sure that she does. Mm -hmm. There isn't a single very famous player walking this earth that, that does sure. not. Um, Bartolo Colon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that guy. I think we all agree he's pretty great. He was universally loved. Yeah. Everyone likes Giannis, too. He's very yeah, likable. Everybody does like He's Giannis. the guy that's very likable. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. He's so innocent. That's because he'd be letting us into the bedroom where right. we're not supposed to be. And he's like, hey, baby, you want to? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, I know Twitter's changed, but damn, right. do you got to pay for this? Right. But I have only ever taken issue with the discourse around her. Sure. Not with her. I think she is great. And I think that it is not her responsibility. Some people say things like, well, I wish that she would do more to calm a small group of her fans from being so nasty. I don't think that's her responsibility. It's not her responsibility to check. If you don't give you know, it air, right? If you yeah. don't, if you, if you, and it's not, well, it's just, it's not her responsibility to carry, she already carries the weight of true. the league and her team and her endorsements and her family and all of this pressure already. It's not on her mm -hmm. to be burdened by social media clowns. Um, so I don't think it's on her to do that. Exactly. And, you know, I tell you what Ellen had to say, um, Ellen Duncan had to say with a grain of salt because you know how she switches her words. You know how she comes out and say one thing and change it to another. And anyway, but she's right. Caitlin Clark is not Caitlin Clark's responsibility to come out and check her fans. She has the weight of the world on her shoulder, carrying the team, being the face of the league at the same time, breaking records, being um, the spokesperson for Wilson a Nike deal, doing all of this other stuff. But they want her to come out and be some kind of activist and speak up for 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 nonsense that other people could be doing that been in the league longer than her. They just mad because she has a stronger fan base than them. That's the whole thing. And they mad because a lot of her fan base are black men, black women. You know what I'm saying? And they don't like that. Something was, I read something earlier that said that they did this to Sabrina Onescu, bullied her. And I'm sure Sabrina Onescu probably, you know, once her time in New York, she probably wanna, probably will wanna leave. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think people like Breonna Stewart is, 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 is she's not, to me, like I said, she's very, to me, I think she's very evil. I think she's, she's, she's treacherous. She, she, you could tell how she look in front of the camera, how she talk. She's, she has an agenda. Now I can't say the same for Nafisha Carlo because she seems sweet person, but hey, she could have agenda too. Like she was talking to CC when they, when she was injured, when they first played the fever, like boom, boom, boom. I mean, yeah, the fever. But they want her in their league. But see, I think Caitlyn is going to be smart enough not to participate in that league because if she sticks to the WNBA and knowing that all these young college kids come out, because that's what Breonna Sue going to do. She's going to try to recruit them and say, oh, we can pay you this, the NBA. But now with Caitlyn Clark stardom and what she's going to be doing, Special viewership and her team in the playoffs and what they're gonna be doing from that point. Guess what's gonna happen? She's gonna probably be the first person to make a million dollars in the league. To be honest with you, and they really gonna be hating that. Like they was crying about charter, charter, charter planes. 
Say, oh, it been in the works. If it was in the works, y'all would have been not had it. It took Caitlin Clark to come to do that. So my thing is this. My advice to you, Kathy Ingenberg, stand your ground. Regardless, people are going to like you. People are going to dislike you. Hey, I didn't, I didn't like Roger Goodell. I don't like Roger Goodell. There's a lot of things he mishandled in the NFL. But look, he's still there. There's a lot of things Adam Silva doesn't do well in the NBA, but he's still there. So for Brianna Stewart and all of them to get together and try to oust this lady, it's going to make them look bad in the end. Rather, Kathy Ingerberg had came out and say the right thing or the wrong thing. It would have never been enough for them because they would have cried and moan about something else. They hate that Caitlin Clark and Angel Reef fans have they have more gravity than they do. Because if they was as good as they would or are, guess what? They would have they would have fans. They would have fans. But they just mad because Caitlin Clark is moving the needle and they can't stand it. But let me let me explain something else to you before I leave. But look how nasty some of these WNBA players do and how they act going to Twitter. Look how they act. They don't act nice. They all they do is be on the defensive and attack. So you make other people attack you on social media. If you came out and talked like you had some sense. People might learn to like you a little bit better, but y'all come out here tweeting stupid stuff, and then when somebody clap back at y'all, then y'all say, oh, see, it's racism. Sometimes you put your own foot in your mouth. No, how that saying goes? You cut your nose off to spite your face. No, and no, say don't cut your nose off to spite your face. So with that being said, let me know what you think. What you think Kathy Ingerberg should do? Was she right? Was she wrong? Um, should she do anything more? Could she continue to go on like she's been doing? Well, <clears throat> keep them bells ringing until the next time. And you always know what I say. You know what it is. Hey. So amazing. Uh, you see how they playing? Uh, live wire. It's all about sports and entertainment. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So official like you never seen. Keep it going till the whistle blowing from the referee. Uh, everything from highlights and stats. You know that we got to run it back. Whether on the field or the court. You know that this is where it's at. Uh, subscribe, no delaying. Uh, this is live wire. Uh, sports and entertainment. Let's go. Hey.